Welcome everybody to the Rock Weapon Classic training series and we're still on part number five as I was missing something I wanted to tell you which is what happened with our background mesh with the hexadrial mesh uh, cells when we are using and doing the castellated mesh and therefore this is uh, part 5.2 which I am explaining you how um, we can detailed analyze the shell shapes we get during the castellated process and we are actually having two of cells types it's uh, the pure hexagon cells which comes from the background mesh and the polygon cells of arbitrary um, face amount my name is Toby and we are just going on and jumping into our project. So we're going as always to our training case. We have it here. So um, we have in one our castellated part we created the last time. By the way, I made uh, al almost already a few tests. So. Um, yeah, something is not as it was in the previous video, but nevertheless, I will just give you what we have during castellated. So when you type in check mesh, then we execute check mesh, and if you have a time folder zero, it is checking either the poly mesh in the zero folder or in a constant. If you do have a mesh in the zero folder, you can also make check mesh constant. Then you will simply um, run the application to analyze the mesh which is located in constant. And all right. Okay, so when we are checking the mesh in constant poly mesh, we have our background mesh we analyze with the check mesh utility. Therefore, you see here we have a pure hexadron mesh which has around 100,000, uh, 10,000 cells. All right, so you can also go through these uh, parts, um, but this is not the topic I want to, to tell. And we are going on, so check mesh is also checking uh, the time folder one where the castellated mesh is located. So one thing I should mention here, you see also you have the points, the faces, internal faces. So um, if you subtract these two, you will get the boundary faces, sure. So you see here cells, faces per cell, six, because your hexadron has six faces, right? So if we are going on in time one, we will see the falling. So first we will have more cells, which is obvious if, as we are cutting um, and, and refining the cells which are intersected by the surface. But the interesting part is that we have phases per cells, which has a floating point number, which is 6.122 or whatever. So. If you are not aware why this uh, is happening now, because actually we are just doing um, um, castellated, so we are not introducing arbitrary sh uh, cells, shapes or types like wedges or tetraedrals. But um, we are, as you can see here, introduce polyhedral cells. And we have like the hexadrals, and now we have polyhedrals and the polyhedrals are commonly also split into the number of phases these polyhedrals have. So I'm not sure why this is a polyhedral which has six phases. It could be also a hexahedral, but there has to be something that it has to act as polyhedral. I, I think I have something in mind, but it doesn't matter. Um, but you see how these polyhedrals exist or how they are split into the different phases. So you can, out of this information, you can check out, okay, we have 10 polyhedrals, which has eight phases. We have 62, which has eight in phase. And in order to show you that I don't say anything crappy, 
or that this check mesh is doing a good work, I will now give you the information how you can check why um, we get polyhedrals here and how you can see where these polyhedrals are located. So this is actually the mesh we created or you are going to create during the screencast. So I made a few changes probably to the previous one, but it does not matter at all. What we are going to do is we just cut through here and we will also check this sliced one. So we want to see how are the cells. So the first we want to see the original shape of each cell and then I will also show you how you can check which cell type it has. So, okay, so for the first thing you can go to crinkle slice, which will mean we will, we will um, make all the cells available, not only slicing through the cells or cutting through the cells, so we are visualizing all the cells. So you see here, we have here some nice cells, which are pure hexadrals. Here the same and here it is also valid. But for any reason, we have here this crazy pyramid removed cells or how you will name this guys looks more like a tetrahedral or polygon than a hexahedral or yeah. And this is based on the fact that we said, okay, if you click here on this um, main object, we decomposed polyhedrals, which would mean that um, Snappy is like triangulating them and then cutting the parts out, which are not actually visible in this view. And doing so, we will get a nice mesh, which looks now more or less a pure hexadron mesh, but actually it is not. So, in order to check out how these um, cells are created, it is obvious. So, we have a pure hexadron cell, background mesh. Now we have one cell and the next cell, which is located, oh, I have to check out too. So, we have one cell and the next cell and through the second cell on the left hand side now and there is a shape going through so we refine the cell. However these two cells which has uh, the same lengths of each edge share one face. Okay, So now there is a shape going through and the second cell is refined. So we are making eight more cells out of it. So using the finite volume method it is uh, like each face can only be shared by a neighbor and an owner or vice versa. The owner cell and the neighbor cell, they share only one face. It is not possible that two or two other neighbors are sharing one and the, the same face. It is not possible. So this is like a strict limitation or it's like a conservation that we have only one face which is connecting by a by, by two cells. So in other words, one face connects two cells. And if we do have now these cutted cells on the right, on the left hand side, we have introduced four cells here with, while we keep this cell the same. So this shared face cannot be one face anymore. So we have to cut this face two. What would this mean? Or this leads to the fact that the smaller cells, they are pure hexadron cells, which share like a small one, one fourth of the original face to the neighbor cell. Okay. However, this cell, the big one, now has on the big face, this face was cut into four cells. So this cell now has four faces on these sides, which does not make the cell an hexadron anymore. So it is a polyhedral because it has more faces here. It's four. So this phase one, which was shared by the two big guys, 
are now cutted into four for these small cutted cells, which are pure hexadron. And these small faces are also belong to the big one, but the big one has now these four, four faces, um, which actually, yeah, couples the neighbor and the owner cell of one of these four faces. So, okay, I think uh, it is obvious and in order to check it out, you can simply cut out cells here while getting select cells throughout and then you can select some cells. For any reason, you see only here some selection, which I don't know why the other part is select and is not visible to be selected. So we can then go to extract selection and you will get these guys. Okay. So now you see that we have here a, a collection of cells and we are just interested in the big one and we again extract the selection. We check out how does this guy look like and therefore I just um, make it in white. Probably we will um, can make the lines a bit thicker that you get it much better, but it was already obvious. So this is like a um, hexadron, which has, as I said, four neighbor cells on this direction, on the right hand side, which are cutted. However, the this cell was not refined and therefore we get these four new cells or faces. Thus, this cell is not a hexagon anymore, it is a polygon. And in order to check out the cell types, you can, again, you can just uh, make this visualization, you cut it, then you go to spreadsheet and then you go to cell data and here is uh, the cell type located. And you see that this is um, a polydron, which is obvious as we do have here four, four faces. And yeah, that's, that's it. That's everything. So out of what do you, you get out of this? When you make castellated mesh, you make a pure hexadron mesh um, to an hexadron plus polydron mesh. And now you can think about what the fuck we, we were checking out. Where are these 18 phases or how could a cell with six phases, which is more or less a hexagon, is now a polyhedron. So think about that. I think this is um, understandable, even like these uneven numbers. If you think a bit, you can get the idea why we get like polyhedrons with different phases. So you can imagine um, a cell can be located somewhere and also this upper cell gets refined. You get here plus three more phases. And here, if this cell is refined, you get plus three more phases. So at the end, you would have four, 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 12, um, 13, 14, 15 cells. So something like this, okay? And so, the next thing is we are going to make the snapping part and hopefully we can go on a bit more. Personally, I, I believe it is good to have all these things now and within this screencast either or rather than making own snappy hex mesh training cases. But if something like this is um, really needed for the community just leave a comment below like my work share it and if you are thinking it is worth to supporting it you can make a voluntary donation on my website i welcome everybody who is doing that because it is yes it is a lot of work um i have to do and we have 15 minutes left i think it's fine my name is Toby, keep foaming guys, keep healthy and we are, we see each other 
or you see my face in the next training session six with snapping and snappy hack smash. Bye bye.